Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are here for the TABS 3 virtual user group meeting for the month of March 2015, brought to you by your friends at Attorney Computer Systems, Leanne, Mary Jo, myself, Patty, and all, everyone else here. We're, we're glad you're here. We couldn't be more excited. Um, today we are talking about... Uh, Client Timekeeper Productivity Reports, that's Mary Jo's continuation of her series on, on reports and tabs. And I'm going to talk about period versus date-based reports, which is kind of along the same lines, but I'm not talking about reports so much as a concept. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But before we do a little bit of housekeeping, this right here is your GoToWebinar control panel. Yes, I know, they've got new icons. I'm just too busy to change my screenshot. Someday I will. But it looks pretty much like this. And if you're still seeing this big part of it, it's because you haven't pressed a button that looks kind of like this that has arrows, an arrow pointing to the right. Because if you click that button that looks like an arrow pointing to the right, it will slide this big part right off your screen. And the only thing that you'll still be able to see is this little bank of buttons. So if you'll want to click that and get it out of the way so that it doesn't cover up what, you're, what you'll be looking at today, um, once you've done that, this button will turn into a button that point, an arrow that points to the left. Clicking it again will cause this to slide back into view. Why would you want to do that? Why, of course, because you're shy and you have a question. If you type a question here and remember to hit the send button, it is important that you remember to hit the send button because if you don't, Leanne won't know. Uh, Leanne, by the way, is our humble and timely moderator. Leanne won't know unless you click that send button that you have a question. But when you hit the send button, Leanne springs into action. She recognizes that you have a question. She waits for the opportune time. And then she interrupts Mary Jo or myself and asks your question on your behalf. Now, as if that weren't enough, and by golly, it sure ought to be. Don't unmute your phone and say something, Mary Jo. <laughs> if that weren't enough, and by golly, it sure ought to be, you might get more of an answer than you bargained for. Because I tend to ramble and babble and many other things. And so remember that this will continue to be available to you to continue typing follow-up questions or if we get off track to clarify what you were originally asking. Just remember to keep typing those questions here. Remember to keep hitting send. Leanne will continue to interrupt us, and it will just be a, a big question fest. Now, if you are feeling not so shy, you might surprise us because we only have this happen every once in a while. You might click this button here that looks like a hand with an arrow pointing upwards in front of it. Uh, that means raise your hand. And if you raise your hand, Leanne will once again spring into action. She will recognize that you have a question. But instead of uh, reading your question on your behalf, she will unmute you at the opportune time. And she will let you ask your own question. So keep in mind that that, uh, that puts you into what we call the no Dorito, no Frito zone. Uh, you, you will remain unmuted until your question has been fully answered. So don't hesitate to jump back in and, and keep me on track or uh, keep Mary Jo on track. She occasionally gets off track too, just I do it more often. Or to keep asking those follow-up questions. So without any further ado, oh yes. Oop, I don't know what that is. That was from last time. Uh, I was going to say without any further ado, we'll turn it over to Mary Jo, but no. We are going to remind you that uh, version 15.1 and 15.2 are being sunsetted uh, and that they will be uh, out of here and off support come June of 2015. So just a few short months away and we're ready to go uh, with 15.1 and 15.2 being gone. So if you have those, consider getting updated to a later version so that you can continue to get support and continue to have that upgrade path. Mary Jo's just going to randomly click buttons until she gets to what she's looking for, which is this, I believe, tabs three. And I'm going to turn it over to her, and she is going to talk about client I, I and have, time I have so many reports. things to talk about, Paul, to respond to that I just don't even know where to begin. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm gonna, first, I'm, first gonna, I'm thinking Tigger is around here springing all over the place. Springing. Tiggers, Tiggers are wonderful things. And then I see all these windows. That How many times do we go to clients and we say, why do you have so many windows open? And I'm closing about 20 of them to get to the screen. Well, I'm anyway, just trying to emulate them. I'm going to mute myself and go away now. <laughs> 
Well, we are here. We are at the tab three screen finally. And I'm going to talk about the Timekeeper Productivity Report and the Client Productivity Report. So I would say these are probably uh, the Timekeeper Productivity Report, by all means, is probably one of the number one reports that, um, that you will be using for um, all kinds of information regarding your timekeeper's productivity. We want to know how many hours they build. We want to know how many hours they work so that we can pay them based on that if they get a certain percentage of that for the, the month or the year or however that's based. This is a perfect report to show that, along with a couple of other things. We can also see that same information based on the client perspective rather than the timekeeper perspective. So we can see which clients are our most productive clients, which ones have uh, built and uh, uh, worked more time on, and, and all of that information. So those two reports are key. I will tell you these two reports um, are also two of the most misunderstood reports as far as how long that information is available for. Um, and it's the one that can get everybody in trouble if you've advanced your year and you haven't printed it yet. Because if you've been in that situation, and I have several clients that have, you realize January oh, 20th, 25th, you go to run that report and you've already advanced your year that you no longer have the prior year available. And Paul is going to talk a little bit more about why that is. Um, but it is uh, something to be aware of with this report that you only see the current year um, until you advance. And once you advance, you lose the prior year. So let's take a look at these a little bit in more detail. So let's start with that timekeeper productivity. It's underneath our productivity reports, timekeeper productivity. We have our options tab where we can choose a timekeeper that we want to look at. This is working timekeeper. So if this is number one to one or you want to see everybody, you can do that and you can start them each on their own page. So if this is part of your monthly routine and you're going to print all the timekeeper's productivity reports for the month, you can leave this open. You can choose the month that you want to run it for. And you can say start each timekeeper on a new page so that way you can hand those out and distribute them to those timekeepers if need be. We can choose whether we want to see just the build information, just the worked information, or both. And then we will have more things available on our format tab based on what we, we choose here. We also can choose to print the zero activity timekeeper. So if uh, you're doing a yearly productivity and uh, you had an attorney that left in July, uh, they might not have activity here in a while. So we might want to see their, their productivity totals as well. And then your criteria page, which is available on uh, all the reports, that's going to just show you which per parameters that you've chosen for this. You also can run this by level. So if you wanted to just see all of the senior pro uh, partners productivity totals, all of your paralegals uh, productivity totals, your associates, your counsels, whatever you have defined in your nine different levels here, you can run this report by level as well. So let's move on to the format tab. I told you if we picked just build, for instance, if I came over to the format tab, all my worked information is grayed out. If I chose to just see the worked information and come over here, all my build information is grayed out. I have less columns to choose from. If I choose both, I then have both sides to choose all the different things I want to see. There's a lot of information here. If I were to print this report right now, it would have a lot of columns, a lot of information, and that might be what you want. But if it's not, you can zero in on the things that you want to see. If I'm only looking for a report that has the hours worked for a time period, I could just uncheck everything else, and I can have those hours worked. If I want to know what the billable hours worked was, I can just choose that. Again, I can be very specific in here. This is a report that will show write-up and write-down values. It will show me my write-offs. Uh, if I just wanted to see write-offs, I could just choose that and check that box. I can even see the difference in the percentages if the rate, um, you know, if I had billed a certain amount into what I had worked and so on. There's lots of different things in here. I'm going to just leave the standard checked here for a minute, and we're just going to say OK and preview this. And I'll show you that even with some of these unchecked, we still have a lot of information here. So every single thing here has a, a place. Here's my build information for Michael Larson for August. Here's his uh, information for September, October, because we had done this report from August to December. And then it will also give me my year to date. If this were just one month, I would have one month column here of all of those totals. Then I move down into my worked information, and it's giving me percentages and the differences and all of that in here. A little cluttered, so what I like to do is just zero in on what I want. I don't really care about write up, write down. So I'd like to know the build amount, how much was worked and billed. Um, don't need my write-up and write-down totals or rate. 
uh, or effective rate of percentages. My work, I'm just going to keep in my non-billable and billable work and the hours to bill. I'm not even going to worry about any of these. I can get my totals. And this will be just a little bit cleaner. Not quite so many columns in here to worry about. So if you're not getting quite the look that you want and you're seeing way too much information, just go and check a few boxes, play with it, check some other things, see what you get. Um, I told you you can also see just write-offs only. If I wanted to just come in and see those, I can uncheck all this other stuff. And we can get out and just see those. There's other reports that show that as well, but this is one of them that will show me what the write-offs were for uh, different timekeepers. I did not say to put them all on one uh, different page, so that's why I'm seeing them all on here. And I still had worked information checked, even though I didn't check any information to show here. So that's why I'm seeing that with nothing there. So it's just a really cool report that can tell you um, what those totals were. At the bottom, there is grand totals as well, so you'll, you'll get that information. Um, and one other thing that people don't use very often, but it is available, is the graph. So I'm going to come in and do the, um, the hours worked compared to the hours to bill, and we'll just do our billed amount, um, our hours to bill, and the amount to bill, and our totals. Let's do the graph. And I'm just going to tell it to create a graph. I do have a few uh, parameters here to choose from. So the report items to graph, I want to do the build worked hours, or I can do different. I have all of these different things. These are all corresponding to the columns on the previous page. So if I just want to see the build hours, I want to do it by individual timekeeper. I could gr uh, graph it by grand totals. I could include the totals and year-to-date totals. And I have different graph options, even. I can do a vertical bar. You can do the a uh, stacked bar, all of these different things, the pie chart, uh, what kind of a, a, a graph do you want to show them. Uh, it even gives it a title, which you can change and modify. And you can include a legend. So let's just do a simple one. Each timekeeper has its own color. It even corresponds down here with the legend. So you can see, based on this, that Pam, P-A-M, I don't think that's her name. I think it's actually Paula or somebody. But P-A-M has the most time in August. She also had the most time in September. But, oh, Michael Jensen passed her in October. So you can really get a, a visual if you need this for meetings or things to get people motivated. You have this graph option as well. So just something different. And I don't have, I guess, too many people that use that. But if you do, that would be interesting to hear how you use it and, and, and why. The other report we're going to talk about is the client productivity. Same kind of a concept, but based on the client perspective, not the timekeeper. So let's open this one. This screen is the same as all of our screens uh, in our report section and tabs. You have all the same parameters here. You can load and save all of your different specific frequencies, locations, and so on, which we did a webinar oh, a few months back that told all about all of these options. So you can review that one for that. But on our options screen, we don't have quite as many things as we have with the timekeeper. We can show a date range, like we did for them. We can choose to include the work and process totals. And we also can include the write-off only clients if we want to. So we can see those clients that the only thing that they have is a write-off on them. Our sort is, again, our general sort. So we can just say we want totals only, or we can do grand totals. We can sort it by primary, secondary, originating, or category. Um, and let's just take a quick look at this one. I didn't limit it, but you could limit it to a specific client. But this is just going to give me for the date range specified how many hours were billed, fees, expenses, advances, the total. I did include the WIP, uh, write up, write downs, and the rate, and then the average age there. So you've got all kinds of information here for the client productivity. So you can start to see those totals and which clients are um, you know, bringing in the most amount of work. Uh, this is split by timekeeper, so we do have uh, by primary. I, I think I ordered it by primary. So it's giving each timekeeper on a different page so they can get their top clients that are, um, you know, to get their productivity totals on. So, so that one's a little bit easier to run. Um, not quite so many things, but useful all the same. Paul? Okay, well, that's very good information, and, and if I remember correctly, Mary Jo, last month you did timekeeper and client realization reports. And so this month we did timekeeper and client productivity reports. And so what comes to mind is that uh, those are very much 
alike. They are similar, but the date ranges in the timekeeper realization report are showing exactly how much time was billed and how much money was brought in on that time, mm -hmm. specifically in a given period of time. Where this is, if I give that productivity total, I'm just seeing what was billed that month. Gotcha. I, I'm not seeing what money came in on it. I'm just seeing I billed this amount or I worked this amount in this specific amount of so time. So the realization is an important distinction. That word mm -hmm. is what did we realize, what did we get based mm -hmm. on what was billed. Now, Correct. Um, there's another important distinction as well in that the productivity reports are what we call period-based reports, and the uh, receipt allocation, um, um, receipt allocation, where did I get that? The realization reports are date-based reports. Now, I'm going to interrupt. Uh, Leanne has a question from somebody on, probably on something Mary Jo said, so I'm going to let Leanne jump in with that. Yes, I'm going to leap in with Janet's question. Can you compare the current year by month to the prior year by month? For example, February of 2014 to February of 2015. Not unless you printed out the year before at the end of the year before you advance. Remember I said at the beginning, you lose the prior year with this report. So as soon as you advance from 2014 to 2015 and you're in January of 2015, you no longer even have that as an option. And I'm going to show you on here when I go to, to do my drop down. Right now I've got my beginning reporting month of August 2014 because I'm in sample data, so it still thinks I'm in 2014. But if I wanted to compare 2013, I don't even have 2013 it's here. It's only January through December of that current year that I'm in. So I don't have a way on this report to compare anything for the prior year. And Paul's going to go into a little more detail on that, what he's talking about with period and date-based reporting and why that is. Exactly. That's a perfect lead into what I'm headed toward in that the period-based reports depend on when you advance the month or advance the year in tabs. We sometimes call these bucket reports. Let's, let's think about taking the information as we get it and throwing it in a bucket for, let's say, March of 2015. But then as soon as we get into April and we advance the month into April, we put a lid on that bucket and we can't throw anything more into it because now everything we do is getting thrown into the April bucket. That's what a period-based report is. It's, it puts them into these buckets or periods. And when you close the month, you're closing that period or closing that bucket up so nothing else can go into it. The reports that we were talking about from last month that Mary Jo went over, the realization reports, those are date-based reports. And so that information that's pulled into that report is based on the date, and it may fluctuate. Think about it for a second. If I have all my stuff for my March billing going into the March bucket, and I close March, and I throw that lid on that bucket, and then I unbill something and rebill it, even though I may be rebilling it with a March date, it's still going into the April bucket now because I've closed that period. And so period-based reports can be a problem that way. Since they're not based on the actual date, if you make an adjustment, you have to, to kind of figure that into what you present to the partners when you give them these reports. You have to say, oh, well, you know, we, we pulled mega corporations bill and rebuild it, and now it's going to show up in the April productivity totals, even though it was a March bill. And that can be a problem. One more problem, Paul, just the other way, if you forget to advance your month, you might still be back in... October or September or August of the prior year, and every time you're updating statements and putting things through, it's all dumping into the August bucket. of the prior year because you've never advanced your month. So we can go both ways. Exactly. So uh, let's look real quick at how you can tell what's date-based and what's um, what I call them bucket-based, period-based reports. Um, they have a really neat, uh, STI or TABS3 has a really neat uh, knowledge base article. It's called the Report Finder. And when you go into help, it's right there on the main screen. Let me just move this down so I can show you because I clicked on it. Go into help, and the very first thing that you get into at the main menu uh, 
uh, there's this kind of like opening screen, and right up there at the very top is the report finder. So you, you really don't have to look very far for it. And then that takes you to an article that, that then links you to the report finder. Um, and this is it. Now, I'm going to make this full screen. This first off, let me explain how this works. This is the report finder. And when you don't have any of these boxes up here checked, down below you will see every single report that tabs can produce. If you click on the hyperlink, you'll be taken to descriptions of that report. If you click on the View Report button, you'll take, be taken to sample reports. Very neat tool. But watch this. Let's say I wanted worked hours and non-billable hours. And then I scroll down, and the only reports that will be shown are the ones that satisfy that condition. Now, that's not really why we're here, so I'm going to uncheck that. Because now I'm back to showing all the reports down here. And if I scroll down, you'd see them all. And you'll notice there's this period-based checkbox. If I click on period-based, I am now looking at the remaining five period-based reports in tabs. Now, a little history for you. Back when tabs 1 and tabs 2 and the first versions of tabs 3 came out, um, everything was period-based. And if you are an accounting person and you have the accounts payable in general ledger also, you know that when you updated to version 17, you don't even close your month in, in general ledger anymore. That's where we're headed with tabs. Right now, these are the only reports that are based on the buckets, that are based on the periods. And once STI eliminates uh, those buckets, eliminates that month end close, these reports will go away and they'll be replaced with something that's date-based. Now, why am I telling you this? Because I'm not a big fan of the period-based reports. Now, some people, some of our clients love them and live by them, and they're very religious about updating their, uh, advancing their month and tabs at exactly the right time, and they're very careful about what they unbill and how they do things, so it works well for them. However, I'm a big fan of the date-based reports because that way, if you unbill something and then rebill it, you can go back and reprint the report uh, and, and, and basically yank the old report out of your partner's hands and give them this new report with updated information. The date-based reports will always reflect that period, that, that month, that year, that quarter, whatever it is that you're reporting on, even when you go back and change things and then rerun the report. Now, the, the flip side is that... Um, with period-based reports, you don't have to worry about rerunning the report, but that's only because it's not going not to affect it. It's going to show up in the wrong period from my perspective. So that's the difference. The difference is whether or not these things are being dumped into a bucket or into a period based on what month you're currently in and when you've advanced the month, or the date-based reports simply go by the date of the statement or the date of the transaction, whatever is being reported on. Uh, and then can always be fluctuating, can be in a state of flux, and can allow you to make changes halfway through the next month and then go back and reprint a report and, and still get an accurate report. So that was simple. <laughs> Mine was simpler than Mary Jo's. I just wanted to make that clear distinction between period-based and date-based reports, because as Mary Jo is going through these reports and describing them to you, I want you to understand the ramifications of, of using these period-based reports as opposed to using the date-based reports. So, next month in our TABS Virtual User Group meeting, we will be talking about rates. Mary Jo is going to take this topic and she's going to talk about everything to do with rates. Rate tables, rates set at the timekeeper level, rates set at the client level, rates, rates set at the timekeeper uh, level level. <laughs> I didn't repeat myself. Uh, set by timekeeper level. Um, she's going to talk about all the different ways to set rates and what their ramifications are. And I'm going to talk about fatal errors. We've all gotten them, but do you know what to do with them? Um, do you know how to save that information, how to get that information to us to tell us what went wrong so that we can investigate? Well, come join us next month and we'll tell you all those secrets. I'm going to reiterate real quick that version 15.1 and 15.2 are going to be sunsetted in June of this year. So if you're still on a version 15.1 uh, and 15.2, get off it or else you'll lose support and you will, uh, it will be harder to update your software when the time does come to do that or when you do want to do that. Uh, and uh, eventually that will turn into a situation where you'd need to send your data into STI just to get it converted up to the current version. So be sure to check. How do you tell what version you're on? Well, it's pretty simple. You go to whatever piece of software you happen to be in. We'll go into tabs. 
we go into Help, we go into About, and right up here it's going to tell us what the version is that you're on. So go check that out right now and make sure you're not on 15.1 or 15.2 if you don't know what version you are on. And if you are there, get out of there. <laughs> I'm going to take you over here real quick. I'm going to take you to our website because I want to reiterate what I always reiterate, attorneycomputersystems.com, that these videos of these webinars and these virtual user group meetings and um, our, our, our eBytes video series that Mary Jo does and our Paul and Mary Jo show, they're all out here. So if you want to see what the next TABS virtual user group meeting, for instance, is about, you just come here and click on that. And there it is. Well, that's March. April will be up there soon. Um, and if you scroll down even further, you'll see recorded versions of every one we've ever recorded. And we've been doing this and recording them for years and years. So a lot of content here. And you can always get to them. Now, if you see a topic that interests you, like you, know, you get an email or you see it listed here, and you're not going to be able to attend, go ahead and sign up anyways. Because uh, even if you're not going to be there, we don't care. You can go ahead and register anyways. Uh, Patty will send you an email the very instant that video is available, and so you'll be able to watch it as soon as it's up on the website. And of course, keep in mind that you can always come here and search for whatever it is that you want information on, and we will uh, show you a list of videos that meet whatever criteria you're searching on, and you can go right to the video for whatever it is you're looking for. So everybody have a good rest of the day, and uh, good April 1st. April Fool's Day, and we will see you at the end of April with our next TAP3 virtual user group meeting. Thanks much. Bye-bye.